Hi, welcome back to the workbench. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe down below and give us a thumbs up. So what I'm looking at today is SMD spool holders. I've actually done some work redesigning these existing spool holders from someone else. I'll put links down below to exactly where you can get these from. Thingiverse is where I found this and it's a good design. Thanks to the person who created it for putting it out. Problem I had was twofold. Uh, first, there weren't any actual spools to put on the spool holders, uh, printable spools. And a lot of the parts I get in thousand quantity for SMD rolls are not uh, on spools at all. They're just loose. So when I get in the loose quantities, I needed something to put them on. And the spools that I had seen so far were not, uh, not conducive to use on a reel of any sort. So they wouldn't be good if you're using a pick and place machine or if you're putting them on something like this, which basically uses the same same style. Uh, they expect a standard roll diameter for the openings and kind of the same, I forget exactly the specs for something, specification for the actual reel. So what I did is I created a couple of different designs, a smaller one for the mini rolls that I tend to get in, thousand quantity with resistors and such at 0805, and then a bigger reel for full reels of things because I noticed that some of them wouldn't actually fit like these rectifier diodes I think needed a larger spool size. Also I made different spool widths and what I realized when I made the different spool widths was that these very nice uh, feeders don't actually have a width size for these spool widths uh, from the person who originally created them. So what I did is I expanded it a bit which was just a quick hack where I cut it and then made the section larger in the middle and then added it back together. Unfortunately, that doesn't work exactly right because you still need to feed, if you can see, there's slots in here that you can feed them through and they go through the front nicely. Let me see if I can give you an example here. I think this one's loose. Yeah, there we go. So get this seated again. And they feed nicely through the end here and come out down below, which is a great feature, and I, I really like how these work, because it holds everything in place. You get a very, very nice design. And then when you print out your... Uh, any kind of label, label, labeler will do this, or you can just hand write a label on them. But since I've got this label kicking around that I fixed, I generally tend to use it. The label rolls are only... Uh, I think they're about $2 a piece kind of would like some higher uh, higher higher color resolution labels, but the black and white works okay. I intended to actually get something like bright yellow or something that kind of showed up. But as you can see, so I got my label on there and then you just slot your extra reel in. And that's how you add them onto it. Then you would put your spool onto one of those, insert it, push it through the opening, and you're done. Now I've got them nicely labeled. They're sticking out. You can use this as a peeling strip. And then you get them falling out below as you're working on your things. I might make a tray for the front of this so that these will fall into a tray when you peel them off. That might make it a little easier to actually pick them up with a tweezer or pick them up with your hand or, you know, depending, maybe a different type of tray, depending on the use case for it. Something that mounts to the front of it, possibly, since there are these mounting screws, they would probably be convenient for it. Also, one of the other things it's got that's kind of nifty is an end cap for these. And the end cap doesn't actually have the center part, so you can just use the last one with the end cap on it. What's neat about that is you could probably screw in the end cap. Oh, actually that wouldn't work because this has to mount going up, so eh, never mind. I was thinking you could screw in the end cap and then unmount it when you actually wanted to take it off a bench or take it off and, and use it somewhere else or wherever it's going to ultimately be stored. You could 
screw it down and then just pick it up. So I'll have to, I'll have to come up with a better solution for that. Maybe I'll make uh, just a little slotted end section for these where you can just pop it in over on your, your permanent storage so it doesn't fall off easily or get knocked around and then you just pick it up as a unit, pop it out, bring it over to your workbench, take the parts out, which is probably what I'm going to do since I don't have a lot of space here and the whole idea of doing things like this is to keep from having to keep everything out on my workbench all the time. Because it's quite a bit more convenient to have this off somewhere else and then I can just bring it over. And the amount of SMD components I usually have that I'm going to be working with won't be too much more than double this. It'll be some capacitors, some resistors, and then some diodes or a few things like that. I can actually load up whatever I happen to be working with at the time on the reels, load it up on this setup, and then bring it over to the workbench so I'm only using whatever it is I actually have on hand that I need to work on at a given time. So that'll be pretty useful, I think. Oh, right, the redesign here. So I still need to redesign this. You could use this just fine as is. You could probably just feed it through down below here, I guess, although that's not ideal. Really, I need to figure out how to get this opening redesigned so it's larger, can fit larger size uh, spool items through it because these have a, uh, they're a bit thicker than say a resistor, so they don't go through there, obviously. It would probably still work even at the 12 millimeter, I think this is 12 millimeter size, if your 12 millimeter was a, was a, you know, still a thin item like the resistors are, or capacitors for that matter, it would still fit through here just fine, even with the wider spool. So it's useful, just not for thicker items like these rectifier diodes. And the other nice thing about this mix and match set is that you can print out your separate parts for the different components with different colored plastics. So what I'm doing is using white for the resistors, and then I've got uh, this kind of translucent green, or probably just green in general, for the oddball components like the rectifier diodes that I don't have quite as much of that I'm not usually using a whole ton of on an individual thing. And then I'll probably come up with a different color for things like LEDs or something else I might have a lot of components of in general. I think this will work out pretty well. Kind of concerned about detaching them and putting them back together uh, to make smaller and larger sets. I might make just a standard setup where it's just a standard width of each type, and then I just load it up when I want to use it for a, for a given design, if I'm going to be doing a bunch of repetitive, repetitive work with it. But I thought these were really neat. They're over on Thingiverse. I'll put the link up. These are the spools I designed, just held on by a single screw, and they've got a notch in them and a section that pops in to hold them in place. So it only needs a single screw to hold it in. So I'm just using spare screws from the screw bin. They're M3s, but you want something that mounts up flush with the indent. And these worked out pretty well. There's uh, different thicknesses in the plastic for different sizes. The thinnest one, the narrow version, is probably best for these because it's expecting a fairly narrow spool. And they work pretty well. And that's it. Hopefully, these will be useful to you if you need an SMD design. I'd recommend them. I didn't actually make these originally, but I'll link down below to the folks who did and posted them over on Thingiverse. Thanks for posting them on Thingiverse. They're super useful, and I think they're going to save me quite a bit of time when I need to go get the components off the bench and get them out here to work on something and make a small run of something with them. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.